Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Chris, and I like that analogy, that cell phone analogy, and, and getting recharged, and maybe that's when we gather for worship, right, to recharge our faith, maybe even to be like those apostles in the gospel text today who said to Jesus, increase our faith. And Jesus was either a bit bewildered by them or, or just laughed with them a little bit because his answer was pretty impossible. He says, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, which isn't really impossible to have that much, but he says, you can say to this big tree, this holly tree out here, to be uprooted and go be planted in Lake Norman. And what good would that do except to show us off? But the other part of that is in the Greek, Jesus is saying, if you have the the faith the size of a mustard seed, and if is one of those Greek clauses that means if, and I know you do. Like if Bill Swartz sitting down on the first pew wearing a yellow shirt, and I know he is because I see him, it's that kind of if. It's even stronger than because he's sitting, it's if, and I know it's true. Or if Gil, our usher, is currently standing up during the sermon, and he is. It's that if, meaning Jesus knows us and knows our hearts and knows those apostles' hearts and knew they had at least that much faith. And therefore, anything and everything was possible. Anything is possible with that much faith, even that mustard seed, even to say to that big tree. And the preacher, once upon a time, was going on and on and on about the power of the Spirit, about the power of God. If you just had a mustard seed amount of faith, anything was possible. And a couple of kids on the first pew, like, kind of like Luke sitting down here this morning, a couple of kids looked at each other and, and they're, man, this pastor's getting kind of crazy today. And they turned around and they looked and they saw an older man behind them, crazy, crazy. Oh, I just dropped his name. <laughs> Crazy Cliff. And they saw Crazy Cliff, and they looked back at him, and Crazy Cliff crossed his eyes because he saw the kids looking at him. And they go, wow, he's crazy. And they look back at each other, and, and they couldn't resist looking back at Cliff because they figured he was picking his nose or something. And so they look back at, and do they, did. and this time Cliff crosses his eyes, but also he starts pulling. Oh! And he puts his teeth over here, and they're just going, and the teeth are starting to chatter and move, and he's, his eyes are still crossed, and those kids are like, wow, the power of God is upon Cliff. He can do anything. He pulls out his teeth. Wow, this is incredible. And then later in the week, Luke and his brother Liam and other kids from around the neighborhood were playing church, yeah, back when the kids used to do that. And Luke or Liam, one of them is preaching and, and starts talking about the power of God and the mustard seed and the mulberry tree and, and going into the lake and you can do anything. And, and all of a sudden Luke's starting to pull on his teeth. And then he starts crying. <laughs> he starts, and his brother says, what's the problem? And Luke says, my teeth won't come loose. Did Luke not have enough faith? <laughs> Maybe the preacher didn't have enough spirit. Maybe he just wasn't intended to pull out his teeth that day, right? Not like Crazy Cliff, those teeth just going. In our epistle reading today, it says something about Timothy's tears. Timothy, whose name means Timotheos, Theos, God, honored of God or honoring God. This young man who Paul basically adopted into the faith, taught him the faith, and at some point in time his mother and his grandmother also learned the Christian faith. It was pretty poignant, I thought, pretty cool to have Sharon up here reading, kind of like a grandmother in that text. And thinking about not only her daughter Melissa, but also Sharon's grandkids, Melissa's kids, especially Colin and Aiden and Charlie, and how Sharon might even write a letter to those kids saying about the same thing. Or I might, as Sharon's pastor, like Paul is writing to Timothy, write to maybe her grandson Colin, a freshman at UNC, and say, remember the faith of your grandmother Sharon and your mother Melissa. It's just this great story. But Timothy apparently has some tears. He's crying. Maybe things aren't going so great in his church, or maybe for him. And so Paul challenges Timothy, rekindle the gift that is in you. That's not re-gift the kindle that I gave you, right? <laughs> not re-gift the kindle if you still use a kindle, but rekindle, get that fire started again. Get that fire. Get your, get your Boy Scout pocket knife and start whittling and start chipping some rocks and get that fire going again. Get, rekindle the faith, but it's kind of hard to do one-on-one. -on -one. 
or just by myself. So Paul reminds Timothy that he has a mother and a grandmother alongside him. He reminds Timothy that he has Paul himself right there beside him. He, ha he reminds Timothy that he has a community called the body of Christ around him. Last Sunday, we celebrated baptisms for two little ones. We've, said, we've celebrated seven baptisms this year. We have a few more baptisms scheduled. Someone told me again yesterday by way of email, I loved seeing the baptism last Sunday. Basically, this is my, my words of this person's email, but they went on to say, how that baptism rekindled my faith. It was pretty cool because they watched and they saw, and they saw this little girl being baptized, and it meant something to them. And my response back was something to the effect of, of I pray that we and you as church can help that little girl continue to grow in life, love, and faith, so that she can be part of the body of Christ as she grows. I think back to St. Mark's. Once upon a time, St. Mark's was just a baby. Maggie also told us sign language about being a baby in the Apostles' Creed, too, that I believe in God, the Jesus Christ, God's only Son, this baby. So St. Mark's was a baby, 1906, 1907, 1908. This baby of St. Mark's, a group of people got together and said, we want to start a new church, a Lutheran Christian church, and we'll call it St. Mark's Evangelical Lutheran Church. You, you got five names. That means you're pretty important. Five names, and this little baby was started. But who knows how to raise a baby, and who knows what's going to happen with that baby. You get together with mustard seed kind of faith. You get together with some prayer. You get together with singing some songs of praise. And then all of a sudden they say, we think we're bold enough to build our own church. For a while they worshiped with the Presbyterian, the ARP, Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church. But then they built their own place. Mooresville, downtown Mooresville, where the fire department now is. And then they eventually built an education wing, an education building that, at least the other week, was still up for sale right between the post office and the fire department. But they built those buildings. And in 1953, when that baby had grown up to be like a, a mid having a midlife crisis, you know, age 45, 55, somewhere in there, all of a sudden that, that baby was no longer a baby and had gone through some challenging years of the Great Depression and wars. Post-World War II, people were coming back, and they were looking around, they're going, hey, the carpet's kind of shabby. So they had a congregation meeting, 1953, and they raised some money, or at least they pledged that they're going to do something about the carpet and the walls of the building, but also we're going to get a new preacher here, so we need to raise some money for that new preacher in the parsonage. So that was part of that initiative that day, $3,000. $2,500 for carpet and sanctuary refurbishment, and $500 for the, for the preacher's parsonage. But that was not all they did that day. They started a building fund, and they said, one of these days we're no longer to be downtown, or we may be bigger and better downtown. But less than 10 years later, that carpet was hardly even stained after 10 years, right? Less than 10 years later, they all of a sudden had another meeting, and they say, there's this new neighborhood out around Fieldstone Road, and we want to move out there because we want to do ministry. We want to be like Paul and proclaim the gospel of God in Christ Jesus that abolishes sin, that brings immortality and light to life. We want to proclaim the gospel in a new place, in a new neighborhood, and so they moved. And on Easter Sunday, 1964, this place was dedicated to the tune of not $3,000, <laughs> $350,000, and it was a mustard seed leap of faith that this congregation took for this having a midlife crisis maybe, but it was still a mustard seed leap of faith, $350,000. And a few months later, they started the kindergarten right here with 80-some kids at St. Mark's Kindergarten. Now we serve 100 and something kids in St. Mark's Preschool, although not this week because they're on fall break, but generally they are here. And it's been another 50-ish so years since we moved here in 1964, we now have new carpet. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm just saying that once upon a time there was new carpet, and before long they had a whole new building. I don't know what this means, but I do know that there were some people, our ancestors, our grandmothers in faith, our mothers in the faith, and even before that, who mustard seed type of faith. They started something. 
they started something. And every single Sunday we gather together, we remember our Lord's resurrection of doing and doing a new thing, like that Easter Sunday, 1964, when this place was dedicated. And this day we also heard from Jan that there's a letter that's getting mailed out tomorrow that's going to be inviting us to be participating in a new thing this week, this month, this year, and moving into the next, moving into the future. It'll be like a mustard seed step of faith. Where is the Spirit leading us? I pray that like the, like Sharon read a while ago, that we have a spirit of power and of love among us that God gives us. That we rely on God's grace, as this text says, and that we are not ashamed, but that we will hold to the standard of sound teaching, of faith, of love that are in Christ Jesus, and that will not only guard this good treasure in us, which is the last line of this text today, will not only guard that good treasure within us, we will share that good treasure within us, that mustard seed faith that allows us to do amazing and miraculous and wonderful things, to go from being a baby to being the ripe old age of 111 and still stepping out in faith and trying new things. There's an old song a preacher once sang, it goes something like this, I may not be able to sing like the heavenly angels, I may not be able to preach like Paul, I may not be able to walk on the water like Peter, but I'm willing to try. I may not be able to walk like him, I may not be able to talk like him, I may not be able to preach like Paul, I may not be able to walk like who? Like him. I may not be able to talk like him, but I'm willing to try. That's all Paul asked of Timothy. Try. Walk with me, because you have the gospel entrusted to you. So walk together, church. Walk together as baptized people of God. Into the future with us, with the stewardship team, take a mustard seed step of faith. Amen.